I'm Christine Angelini. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Florida, and I'm going to be talking in this video today about a Living Shorelines project that I've been conducting in collaboration with uh, some of the researchers and managers at the Guanatalamato Matanzas National Estuarine Research Reserve. The purpose behind this project um, is to meet one of their immediate management needs. There's a lot of boat traffic in this estuary, and um, these boat wakes uh, are, are really altering the hydrodynamics of this ecosystem. Uh, these are typically low energy uh, waterways and these boat wakes are just simply chewing away at our estuarine edges. So to slow this marsh erosion and uh, facilitate the regrowth of oyster reefs, uh, we've been conducting some experiments with a new type of living shoreline design. The whole purpose behind our living shorelines design is to have a sort of two uh, lines of defenses protecting our shorelines from these boat wakes. Uh, the first are breakwaters uh, that, are, that are the first line of defense as boat wakes uh, sort of act on our shorelines and then position behind them we're trying to jumpstart the recovery of oyster reefs to act as a second, secondary biological barrier um, and in combination the break walls and the gavians and, um, and oyster restoration structures are designed to sort of halt the erosion of the marsh edges and, and stabilize their position. My name is Ada Sosa. I am a PhD student in environmental engineering at the University of Florida and I am coordinating the research on this Living Shorelines project. Today we're going to show you how we built break walls along a 55 foot stretch of shoreline. Along this segment we built three walls. Each wall was 14 feet in length and each, uh, the space between the walls was approximately 6 feet. Uh, and these are the measurements that we use for a stretch of shoreline that's roughly over 50 feet in length. To mark the position of the break walls, you have to measure 20 feet out from one edge of the shoreline that you've previously marked and mark that spot with a rebar stake or a PVC pole. Then you have to measure 14 feet uh, from that stake uh, parallel to the shoreline and mark that end and that will be the entire length of your wall. Then, using a mold or uh, some sort of marker, you will then use the ends of the wall to position um, the fence post. Using your PVC grid, you now have uh, the, where you want to position the fence post for your wall. What we do in our group is first uh, use the soil auger to mark the position of each one of the, the posts. Um, so you'll just auger down basically one auger depth uh, into the soil just to mark the position. Uh, once you've marked all the position of all 14 of the fence posts, you can remove your PVC frame and then go to come back to actually dig them out. So we typically use the soil auger to excavate down to a depth of three and a half feet. Pre-opening the holes with a soil auger we found uh, makes putting the fence posts in a lot more efficient. You get through sand and clay layers uh, depending on the substrate of your site. And once you've gotten your hole open to a depth of about three and a half feet, you then take your fence posts, again that has the tapered tip to it, position it in the hole and pressure it down into the substrate using your own weight. Once you have all 14 of your fence posts in on your wall, you then want to, re want to return with your wooden mallet and pound these fence posts in till refusal. This is a really important step in the process uh, because the fence posts are, are really what's bearing the wave energy acts on these walls. To fill these walls, we use branches that were roughly from half an inch to three inches in diameter. They spanned a variety of length, but we preferred to use ones that could span the length of the wall. That would make, make them easier for them to stay put. We bundled the, the branches before bringing them out into the field just for easier transport. And uh, we were able to carry these bundles and spread them evenly uh, inside the fence post in between the two rows of seven fence posts that we built. And we made sure that branches were evenly distributed and that the height of the wall was as even as possible across the length of the wall. Once the, the branches are inside the wall uh, and as evenly distributed as possible, you want a heavy person to step inside of the wall and actually walk on top of the branches to compress them. But once the branches are in the wall and compact, you want to use uh, PVC coated wire and galvanized fence post nails to secure these branches. To start off, you want to tie the 
the beginning of the PVC coated wire around the first fence post and you want this to be approximately 8 inches above the sediment. You want to knot it around and pull it tight and secure it with two fence post nails. Once you've secured the first fence post, you want to take the wire and zigzag it around the wall, uh, making sure to secure it with a fence post uh, nail at each post. Then once you reach the end of the, wa uh, of the wall, loop the wire back around, making sure to wrap it around the fence post that you missed. If you want to use the bees um, for constructing your oyster reefs behind the break walls, uh, here's a couple of tips for how to install them well. Uh, so the first thing is that um, you want to make sure that you alternate the pattern um, when you lay down the bee one bee sheet above the other. So that the basically the uh, direction of the bee goes uh, perhaps to the right on your first sheet and to the left on the second sheet. This is important because it makes sure that you can that the sheets directly overlap with one another and form nice firm rectangle. <laughs> to connect the bee sheets it's really important that you go through and you connect each one of the click joints. So I often start in the middle and start from one end and work my way to the other end and then work on the next row next to that and just so that I'm sure that all of the, uh, the ball and socket joints are, are connected through the whole sheet. To install the bees in the field what you want to do is position them uh, 10 feet behind the break walls and we use two uh, three and a half foot long rebar poles. These are three eighths of an inch rebar poles uh, that we bend an L into the end of and you simply push them through the B sheets into the substrate and position the end of them so that they fit in the grooves uh, that you can see here on the top of the sheet. I'm Matthew Monroe, I'm a biologist at the GTM Research Reserve and this is how we're making our gabions. First, we're using galvanized metal, one inch uh, diameter squares. We're bending them into 18 by six by six inch squares, and we're putting them together to cover a 24 inch by 18 inch area. Once they're cut, we have a wooden block that we use to bend them, and we're using hog clips to attach them together. Once all the metal is bent into shape and hog clipped together, we then take it to our shell recycling center and use shell to fill them. Um, we have oyster shell here, anything would work that is natural material, and then we hog clip them closed. Installing the gabions in the field, we start by measuring 10 feet off the seawall and we lay them out spacing them apart about an inch and a half. Once the gabions are in place, we put a little weight on them to set them in the mud and we use zip ties to attach them together about an inch and a half apart. Mm -hmm. 